Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to go over how to use Celestron's Star Sense, or Artyom Bellis' Astro Hopper, to help you locate objects in the night sky with your telescope, and also some ways that you can attach the Star Sense to your telescope, and then I'll tell you my thoughts about both of them. I'll start with the StarSense. StarSense was invented by Celestron, and it's basically just a piece of plastic with a mirror in the front, and you put your own smartphone in the cradle, and you line up your phone's camera with the mirror. But you first have to download the StarSense app from Celestron, and to get it to work, you have to have a code. Celestron does not sell the StarSense separately. You must buy a Celestron telescope that comes with StarSense and also comes with that code. And you can either use that telescope or you can remove the StarSense from that telescope and then you can use it on another telescope. But you'll need to find a way to attach the StarSense to the other telescope. I'll get to that in a minute. First, let me tell you how StarSense works. The app captures an image of the night sky with your phone's camera, and it matches that image to an internal database in Sky Safari in a process similar to fingerprint matching or facial recognition. The app's processor figures out where the telescope is pointed based on calculated coordinates of the image, and this process is called plate solving, and it's used in professional observatories and also in orbiting satellites. Pretty neat technology. Now let me tell you a couple of ways that you can attach the star sense to your telescope if you don't want to use the telescope that it came with. One of the viewers of this channel, SK, told me about a whole thread on cloudy nights that explains how to attach the star sense to your telescope. One of the ways is to 3D print a finder shoe like this that goes into your finder shoe dovetail and the other end screws into the star sense. Since I don't own a 3D printer, I downloaded the CAD instructions from some nice man on cloudy nights who included them and sent the CAD instructions to a company called makexyz.com out of Tempe, Arizona. And after a couple of weeks, two of these came. I ordered two in case this one breaks. Then I went to the hardware store and got a pack of number eight three quarter inch stainless steel screws with a Phillips head top. And I screwed two of them to screw the dovetail into the bottom of the star sense like that. And in that way, I can put the star sense where my finder scope usually stays and still keep my tow rat on there. And that works pretty well. But I ended up using a different method. I wish I could take credit for, but I can't because it was suggested to me by SK, and that is to buy strong magnets that come with screws on the bottom and those screws screw into the star sense. So I bought the magnets and they came after a couple of weeks and they screwed right into the bottom of my star sense and it attaches very securely to my metal Dobsonian tube with these strong magnets. So those are the ways to attach the star sense to your telescope. You can also try zip ties or you can use a bunch of gaffer tape which is not very practical if you intend to move the star sense to another telescope at some point, but it works. Now let's talk about how to use it. It's very easy to use. After you download the app and enter your code, then you just put the star sense on your telescope and put your phone into the cradle, line your phone's camera up with the mirror at the front, and then point your telescope to a bright object in order to align the telescope with your phone's camera. The same way you might line up a finder scope with your telescope. 
It can be anything. The top of a tree, a bright planet. Ooh, look at Venus. I love looking at the phases of Venus. Very nice. And it tells you step by step what to do. And after you've aligned it, then you're ready to go to any object by pushing the search button. It has a whole list of objects from Sky Safari, or you can go to just about anything. The app works by taking constant images, though, so you have to let it catch up and figure out where your telescope is pointed. After you select a target, it will have yellow arrows pointing the way to where you push your telescope, and when the crosshairs turn green, it should be in the eyepiece. I have a phone here in my pocket because the battery doesn't last long in the cold weather. And so the first thing you do is you put it in the holder and there's a little knob under here that you turn to line up the camera with the mirror. So I've done that and now I have to line it up with an object. I could use their Christmas lights, but I'm going to use Venus because it's still up. So all you do is you get Venus in your telescope and when it's in your telescope then you there's a crosshairs on here and you move it around till the crosshairs line up with your object in this case Venus and then it'll say point to an area of the sky with stars in it so I'm going to do that and then you wait for it to take some pictures and then it'll say it's ready when the bullseye turns yellow and then you pick an object. And I'm waiting for this bullseye to turn yellow. Now I can go to a target. I can click on this icon. Well, let's just go to Saturn. <coughs> You have to wait because it's taking pictures and then when it turns green it should be in the eyepiece and it is. Okay, it's off a little bit. You can click this search button in the lower right hand corner. Let's just pick a Messier object and go to the Dumbbell Nebula. And it'll tell you about it but let's just say done. And then follow these arrows. until it turns green and now let me look in the eyepiece it's off a little bit it was in the corner but there's the dumbbell nebula nice okay let's try one more we'll just go to the search button pick messier objects and let's go to m2 globular cluster in aquarius Turned green. Now let me see if it's in there. Okay, it's in the corner, so my alignment wasn't perfect, but at least it was in the field of view. Beautiful. Very nice. So, okay, yeah, it works really well. Now let's talk about Astro Hopper. It's an open source website created by Artune Bellas. It uses your smartphone sensors, GPS, and compass to help locate objects in the night sky. Even though it's a website, you can turn it into an app on your phone, and it's very easy to use. First, you download and install it at home while you have internet by going to the Astro Hopper website and follow the instructions to install the app on your smartphone. Then you have to figure out a way to attach your smartphone securely to your telescope. Make sure that the top of your phone points in the viewing direction of your telescope. And also, you have to calibrate the compass on your phone. Open the Astro Hopper and calibrate by moving your phone in a figure eight motion. This improves the accuracy of Astro Hopper. Then, you have to align your telescope just like you would with your finder scope. You point your telescope at a bright star or a planet, you tap the align button in the app, then tap 
the star or planet you selected, and the app will align itself with the object. Now you're ready to find objects. You just tap on an object you want to observe, and the app will show you the direction to move the telescope, and also will change the altitude and azimuth needed. Move your telescope until those numbers are close to zero, and that's it. Once you've downloaded Astro Hopper, you no longer need the internet. You just make it into an app on your phone, and then you can open the app once you're outside, and it'll run even if you don't have internet. I attach my phone to my Dobsonian by putting the phone into a phone holder and taping the phone holder to my telescope. It wasn't the most secure way to use it, but it worked well enough as a temporary solution. You could just attach the phone holder to the scope using zip ties or a giant rubber band. Now let's try the Astro Hopper and see how it does. I don't have internet out here on the driveway, so I downloaded it in the house and I made it an app on my phone. And then all you do is just open the app and you pick a star to align to. And I chose Capella and then it's aligned now. Now let's go to NGC 869. Nice, very nice. You now let's ask it to go to Jupiter. Okay. I'm going to this off a little bit. That's because this tape is probably slipping. Now that I've told you how StarSense and Astro Hopper work and some ways to secure the StarSense or your phone to your telescope, now let me tell you my thoughts about both. StarSense is an excellent technology. It works very well and I like it. It's a shame Celestron doesn't sell it separately though and makes you buy a telescope that you might not really want just so you can get the StarSense. But that's what I did and I practically gave the telescope away. It's pretty easy to find ways to attach StarSense to your telescope, and it's incredibly easy to use and works very well. What I don't like is I don't like staring at my phone when I'm out stargazing. You can put it in night mode and it'll turn red, but I just don't like staring at my phone instead of at the sky. I can see how StarSense can really help a beginner to find things that are difficult to find. or help someone living in a light polluted area that can't see very many stars and has a hard time star hopping. I can see this device being very useful in those situations, but for me personally, I live in a rural area and I can see a lot of stars and that helps me to star hop and honestly, I enjoy it sometimes. And I know the sky pretty well and just personally, I'd rather look for things now, sometimes objects that aren't near anything bright or they're very faint and you're never really sure if they're in the field of view, I can see star sense being very useful in those situations. But for brighter objects, I wouldn't use it. I can see becoming overly dependent on star sense and never learning the night sky. Then what do you do if you're out with your telescope and it fails or the battery dies in your phone? which gets to my next um, complaint about it, and that is that your phone batteries don't last very long in cold weather. Yes, you could attach an external battery, but they don't last long in cold weather either. And lastly, once your phone is your finder, you can't use your phone for anything else. So you basically need a second phone that functions just as your StarSense camera. Now for Astro Hopper, it's wonderful that Artoon Bellis made this open source website available to anyone to download for free and use, and I commend him for doing so. Astro Hopper works very well, but it's only as good as your phone sensors are. And so newer phones would work better than older ones. And you really need to calibrate your compass and line the phone up really well with the telescope in order for it to work well and you have to come up with some way to attach the phone to the telescope. It has a night mode also, so it doesn't blind you, but 
Again, I just don't like staring at a phone. And just like StarSense, once your phone is your finder, it's tied up and it can't be used for anything else. And it's dependent on the battery not dying in cold weather. So both StarSense and Astro Hopper have their place and I can see them being very useful to beginners or people living in light polluted areas where they can't see many stars to help locate objects and very useful for those hard to find objects not near anything bright or very faint. I like the star sense better than the Astro Hopper only because it's easier to find a way to attach the star sense to your telescope than just attaching the phone directly to the telescope like you have to do with Astro Hopper. But if you can figure that out, how to attach the phone to the telescope, then Astro Hopper could be very useful in locating objects in the night sky. I thought they were both great tools, but I don't think you should become dependent on one tool. You should always have many tools in your tool chest. <laughs> Call me old fashioned, but I still see a place for good old star charts and learning the night sky. So that's just my opinion. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.